doing on my computer? And why is Stoker and his goons outside my house? I'm gonna have to ask you to make me these parts. Stat? Stat. What does that even mean? I don't know, but that's not the point. We need these parts. All right, but you tell Stoker and his goons to get out of here. You're messing up the daisies. So perhaps that's not exactly how it happened. It was probably a lot more like I sent Ed an email and Ed replied with, here's a part. And it was really straightforward. But when is straightforward interesting? Let's go with the fiction. Fiction being more interesting than reality. We need more of that nowadays. Anyways, let's go ahead and jump into Fusion. I'll show you the file and show you how I approached making it. But before we do that, go ahead and hit that subscribe and the notify buttons. And at the end of the video, or if you just got an itchy finger, hit that like button too. Uh, now, let's jump into Fusion. So here is the part. The part is actually, it's mirrored. There's two versions of this, but it is the arm panels. And since there's two of them, it could be the right or left arm panel TBD. Uh, Although, if you see the uh, QR code, scan it. Anyways, um, real straightforward part, not too crazy. It is did, however, present some challenges in that this white box, uh, the yellow box, the length of the yellow box is the length of my CNC machine's uh, travel. So I did not have much travel, a little less than a half inch of spare space on this side. Um, this is an eighth inch uh, line here to give you an idea of scale. It's like 14-ish inches long. And this is 412 millimeters to the, this point to, to where actually like over here um, from, from here. So very, very close. Very, very, very right to my limits. Technically, my machine is 420 millimeters of limit uh, on the X. However, the 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 block that's used for the inductive sensors to measure the stop actually to limit that. So while technically maybe the frame handles 420, the block was really only giving me about 409. And while 409 seems like a lot, it's actually not enough to make this part. So I actually had to grind it down until I could get to about 415. So I actually ground millimeters of distance off of that stop block that my um, inductive limit switches use. Um, so I used that and changed that a little bit. Once I was able to change that just a little bit, that was just enough room and that gave me enough space to run this. Otherwise, I would have been much more creative. The part had to be glued down, obviously. Let's kind of show what that, you know, let's show the the, the uh, manufacturing. Pretty straightforward manufacturing here. Here's my stock. Um, to give you an idea, uh, basically my thought is I'm going to you know, right on this corner here um, outside. I used Proven Cut for the first time to do this. So Proven Cut is John Saunders' startup where they test materials on a various set of machines with various tools and you give you some starting points based on actual cut things. It's not, it's not math like a, a G-Wizard, which I normally use, but it's straight up like, hey, we made this cut. And so uh, eighth inch slotting with a uh, helical, t uh, uh, sorry, not helical tools, um, Lakeshore Carbide uh, um, Variable Flute um, three, uh, three, uh, Tooth. Um, they had exactly that. Um, and they wanted to go 10,000 RPM. I don't really trust my machine at 10,000 RPM. Has some electrical issues around uh, overvolting when decelerating. I need to add more to the, um, to the resistive brake to put more ohms on the resistive brake so I get a bigger uh, voltage drop. So I ran 7,500, backed off the speed a little bit. Really straightforward cut though, just single pass slot. It's only 16th inch material, it's a sheet. I then went through, popped the holes in it, um, just bored the holes out. Same with these little guys in the corner here. The large holes, uh, they're all bored out and he was, uh, th these are all actually not instead of boring, um, these were done um, with a contour pass, just like the, uh, just like the body was. Um, I then used a countersinking bit, uh, so this is actually a, an 82 degree, I think 82 degrees, right? An 82 degree countersinking bit, and I had it come in and countersink these holes, and then making them wider than they should have. I gotta figure out why somehow. And then I finished it with a chamfer, um, just to make it nice and clean. Once it was done, I took the exact same part, mirrored the part, 
and and just rebuilt all the same stuff. Uh, it really, all things considered, the the only tricky part was actually making sure it would fit, and the fact that I had to tweak my machine to make it fit. So, not super crazy, but pretty straightforward. Well, let's go ahead and jump into kind of the cutting videos. All right, so we're going to start by just uh, surfacing a quarter inch piece of aluminum that we have in fact glued down to uh, the Saunders Machine Works fixture plate. I love this fixture plate. I need to review on it. It's a good, good fixture plate, worth the investment. Um, <clears throat> and then we're doing the uh, platers tape, the, the, the green tape here, and uh, burnish that sucker down. Then we'll go ahead and set all the tools. Um, first, I set my tool setter. It's on a magnet, so I dropped it on a magnetic base. Then I zeroed against the Heimer and used the Heimer offset. So all my tools are, are offset against my Heimer. So we'll go through quarter, eighth inch bit, um, countersink, and then the chamfer mill. That gets just stuck away magnetically, and then we'll go ahead and zero the Y and the Z. We don't need to zero X because the zero for the X is literally the limit of the machine. So we'll get these guys zeroed. And now it's time to glue down. So we'll put some stops in place to help us place our material. Drop down some glue. The activator is actually on the, the uh, tape that is uh, on the actual part, and then we're going to hold the part down with a right angle. Now we're happy, so we'll go ahead and remove remove the stops and make sure everything's nice and firm. It is world's slowest slotting. This is like 18 inches a minute, three or four degree angle, and I'm not going to make you see it all. Here's it doing the drilling, which is more interesting. These move real, real fast. Um, you notice the fuzziness uh, part over there to where I talked about air blades for Tesla Cybertruck. I need air blades on my cameras. So sorry for about that. Here we're to give you an idea of the slowness of the chamfer or the, the slotting. Here's it slotting. That's a big circle. And then I'm not going to make you sit. It took like a minute per because I did not optimize this tool path at all. So it's just the world's worst plunge. Just helical plunge just took forever, so I just kind of give you quick cuts. It, it really was like almost a minute per hole, just stupid. You can see there the the actual center piece came out, just no glue holding it down. The part didn't move, but that little center piece that we cut out did. Once we're done there, we switch over to the chamfer. Um, I don't know if you noticed a little bird nest there. Eighth inch bit did not break, but it had a, a big old bird nest on it. It's kind of crazy. Again, you kind of get an idea how really way too passive I was with the chamfer or, or with this helical into these contours. I was just I was just dumb. The uh, the chamfer mill went perfectly fine super fast. I run the chamfers at like 40 inches a minute. So um, that 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 went really fast nothing magical to see there. Blow off the part. And they always look so good. Parts always look so good when they come off the test machine. Checking out my sh my eighth inch and it survived. So I went ahead and I used my fiber laser here uh, to drop my logo on it. I'm okay to do that. And then I, I, I put a little bit of an Easter egg on here as well. So here's my fiber laser um, knocking it out with uh, with photons. did five passes at 100% power and like 500 inches a minute here um, and these were just treated as pure rasters and there's the results there's the laser results and there's kind of an idea of what the parts look like um, thank you very much for watching